Happy Saturday, everybody. We got Walter. He wanted that was his first request. We could do one tomorrow if you want, personally. I don't care regardless. But he wanted to talk. So we are here. And again, there's a lot of racing last week, and we didn't get to hear his take on. There's a lot of racing from last weekend that we didn't even get to hear about because you bet your sweet ass I'm not giving Flow Racing or Dirt Vision that much money to watch that. Sorry, not sorry. Inflation is real, and uh, I don't even have enough money left over after I pay all my bills anymore because everything skyrocketed to a four Dirt Vision or Flow Racing. So, don't worry, I've already cut some streaming services. Don't bottom of my heart. Drop your prices and probably help you out. You probably make more money because you get more customers. Just throwing it out there. Um, but truck race was okay last night. That you know, it had some moments, a lot of idiocy, a lot of idiocy. But before we get to any of that crazy stuff, I'm not even sure if Walter got to see the flat track races that they aired last weekend, weeks, <laughs> weeks later. I mean, they're way behind from the Red Mile and Laconia, which is located at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. We're not talking about the other Laconia where they hold a bike week. This is Laconia, New Hampshire. Nowhere near Bike Weeky. Um, and really, all this falls most, just like the next one, the Amsoil Off Road, that falls into one of those. Those guys just deserve better. TV contracts, I guess, is the best way to put that because I don't think it's fair that they're shooting, that they're airing it like, I mean, the first, whichever one it was, the one for the flat track was literally from the 28th and 29th of well, May. The, the and, part they, about and they that, just aired it last Saturday or Sunday. The part about that that bothers me is, is if they wanted to be realistic, I can tell you right now, I can turn on both of the Fox sports channels I have available to me in my region. And I, well, three of them actually, sorry. Three oh, idiots them. talking. And in two thirds of the time, when it's not prime time, it's not even games. Like it's not games, it's not races. It's not some sort of a sport ex exhibition. Well, my problem with that is, is you got like the Amsoil off-road truck racing and they have the torque truck racing, the super truck racing. There's, uh, arena okay. truck racing then you have robbie gordon where he has his own off-road racing series but i mean grant that's a little more broad travel but still the whole point of it is, is most of these other racing series still are racing at, at tracks where places like nascar and indy already go to and even some of the nhra stuff they already have the capabilities at most of these tracks to broadcast yet so the unacceptable answer of who who it's a scheduling issue, or we don't have the ability to do that. Yeah, you do. Don't lie. Don't lie. If most of these tracks are already set up for broadcast. Now, if you told me you were going to to Joe Blow, Georgia, and they have this little eight mile track, okay, now, that that might be a little more understandable. They might not have that. Ability. But we're not going to Joe Blow, Georgia, so get out of here. That's the same thing as Arca. Like when they ran in Portland, didn't see it well, forever. Last weekend, we're not seeing it at all. Yeah, that's like, just it. Berlin Raceway, they have the ability to broadcast from that track because they've broadcast before for other stuff at that particular track. And some of them, like they're even running the same weekend as Cup or Xfinity, and then they still don't air it live like what we can we could not listen to people i mean shit when we were in the marine corps i used to be able to stream that shit we could, the local track yeah, we could not listen to like talking heads for one afternoon to like if you could take up the talking head space in a random weekday you could take up the random talking head time when it's live so people can actually watch it because two o'clock two o'clock on a wednesday or thursday you're not getting but everyone's at work but you're not getting and anything those, out of that those daytime race well races that would be daytime here or late nighttime don't tell me you can't air those during daylight hours people can record it you can record that and broadcast it at the same time and then whoever can't watch it live they're going to record it yeah so it gets it all so it gets i mean it's it's easy 
to do in the Amsoil, the off-road, they have a lot of different things that run there. And there's actually, I give whoever, I don't even remember who it might've been CNBC or it's on some weird thing that I, but it was probably CBS sports. <laughs> yeah. that could have been it. Um, again, it was one of those where I'm going, huh? Cause I never look cause they're always covering like old basketball game. And I'm like, no one cares. Literally. It's on the CBS sports. No one cares, but I don't need to see the 1994 college basketball winter classic where that, like, I don't care. Like, Unless you're showing us up with Larry Bird or Michael uh, Jordan. There's <laughs> live stuff happening right now. I'd like to see the live stuff, but last weekend they did air it while they were playing it, while they were racing. Like it was actually on the days it was supposed to, which baffled me. But again, CBS Sports, I mean, that's not a regular channel for a lot of people that I know, which then again, I mean, it's on air, so that's a better start. It depends, it depends on your streaming, your, not necessarily yeah. your streaming <laughs> service, satellite provider, cable yeah. provider. You know, at least that one's there. But again, I love the off-road stuff and I love watching American Flat Track and they're ballsier than I could ever be. That's where I draw my line. That fast well, slipping, I, sliding in the mud. More, I feel like that racing, honestly, is more, would be more difficult than supermoto or super bikes because you're not really leaning on American Flat Track like you do the other ones. The other ones, you're leaning down, your knees tucked, and you're almost touching the ground. That one, your leg is down and your foot is out, and you're doing 90 miles an hour. It's a little bit different. You're trying to save yourself when every time you hit a ding in the track, your son's just slipping and sliding. But it's good racing, and I thought they did, yeah, again, a good job. I just think they deserve better. The race in Canada for F1 it was good for that it was actually a race. I mean, to see someone actually – right within a few tenths of max at the end of a race was a nice that was a good change of pace because you know well i'm pretty sure he won the last the race before Point that nine, by, nine, three by, tenths of yeah, second. yeah yeah like the race before that he won by 20 plus seconds and that's after he slowed down the last three laps and blew a couple seconds like he was up by right a year uh so it was good to see that and lewis get a top three it's yeah been forever but good racing and IRA gave my piece repeatedly on the trucks at Knoxville on the dirt. Well, in I want to talk about that. How is so, Fox Sports still not acknowledged to this point that they dropped the ball and somehow missed Jessica Friesen barrel rolling? They didn't even mention NBC, who didn't have cameras there, reported on it. And I still have to this day not seen NASCAR on Fox the only acknowledge I one heard time. From Fox Talk about it is Brian Kilmeade and Pete Hegseth. We're talking about from Fox Corporation. Yeah. That's yeah. the only stuff they're talking about it. And that's only because they were there. They brought up the fact of what I was getting ready to bring They brought up the same thing I'm getting ready to bring up. And that is you could hear clear as day Kevin in the background bitching someone out because they dropped the ball on the live screen. Not only did they not catch Jessica, but there was a 30 second period where Kevin, Joey, and Ryan were all talking about something and they showed screenplay and live racing of something completely fucking different. There it yeah, is. They're, they're, uh, let's see. There you, there go, you go, Google. Hey, there you go. There you go, yeah. Google. Right there, Google. What you listen to every single one, you put an E next to it. You don't have an E next to our Wednesday show. Trust me, we deserve a big E. We deserve the whole entire screen to just be E. Don't listen. That doesn't, but this one where Chuck slips like maybe two or three times gets a giant E. Like, there you go. That makes sense. Oh, if you see anyway, his face, sorry, move past if you see his face and hear his voice, Google, put an E next to it. Do it uh, accordingly. So, anyways, Kevin was calling it's, it out. He was pissed off. He was in the back. You hear him complaining, yelling at somebody. And the whole point of it is, is he was right. If if the news broadcasters are sitting up here talking about somebody, the live sportscaster is sitting there. He's talking. The other person is engaged in a conversation with them. And what they're talking about never is shown on the screen. What's the point? Like like coverage, Kevin lost his mind over this. Their, their coverage sucked. That's well, actually, and then. That's being if, nice. If you notice, just before he gets 
shenanigans and loses it, when they just before they cut to a screen where they're not showing those guys sitting there, just before that, there's like a 40 second period where Kevin just sat there, not saying a word, no facial expression. You knew right then bad I, things were coming. I honestly couldn't even tell you who was in the booth for that for the dirt the minus like Jamie Little was there. I knew well, the reason I can I can tell you this is because not only did it make me mad, but it's also I've seen it brought up by them two guys on Fox since that happened. Uh, and I tried not to listen. I, got, okay, but I lied. Somebody from Fox Detroit said it to the other yeah. Fox Sports. Mikey. Detroit. Mikey, you know. Sports, where the hell it's called now. I was happy to see Jamie Little get her spot, and then Mikey was talking, and then I just tried not to listen. No offense to Phil Parsons or anyone else involved. It's just. Speaking of Jamie Little, did you see the Westminster Dog Show? No. 146 times they've done that, and the best thing ever happened. The Bloodhound, the oh, standard yeah, Bloodhound right. breed, won. Yeah, I just right. made my Yeah, we had but that. Little was there reporting on that whole thing. It's pretty cool. NASCAR to dog show. <laughs> NASCAR. NASCAR. So you're saying that the Westminster dog show got more coverage than Jessica Friesen barrel rolling through the air before. Oh, before five, before five, oh. she landed on the curb. Don't worry. They sure showed her on the curb pissed off for several minutes. Just, so, yeah. Get off the, the get off. But I have to say, the sponsorship money that comes with that show is kind of like the sponsorship money that comes yeah. with the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. If you and I both have to admit, hey. business-wise, we'd probably do the same hey. thing. The Westminster show has ruined breeds like boxers and all these ones and their ability to breed. Well, you should have seen the breeds that were in to the make them look To make them look prettier. They look prettier. Oh, they can't breathe. Well, the breeds that were, the majority of the breeds that were in the top for the like best of show race, they were, most of them were actually working breeds. Anyways, working dog breeds. Labrador Retriever, English. There was an English setter, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Gold Retriever, Bloodhound, even Daisy's Bloodline was in it. The Walker Hound was up hey. there too, top 20. Hey, she's pretty. It's just, no, I'm not denying it. It's just, it just stops there. Well, I'm just she, saying, her, her, her Bloodline was there too. Like, she was, is, hey, that's well, a show of beauty. She's beautiful. Well, and they, they also, because of oh. her work line, they were really, that was the other thing. They made them do certain, anyways. Moving on. From the talking dogs. about torturing dogs. Yeah. Anyways, that was abysmal. NBC shouldn't be beating you when they're not even covering it. You guys suck. Jamie and everyone. Uh, like, NBC but, uh, sucks as a NASCAR coach. Hey. So for them to catch hey. it wrong. Like, I don't know what. There's just so much wrong with NASCAR on Fox this year. I just, like, don't get how they're so fixated on. You know why it's all messed up? I don't get it. Clint hasn't been here. As a matter of fact, shout out to Clint. Hope you get better in the season. Hey, he only missed one race. I mean, it sucked before that when Clint was there. Just, I know, but they're a rolling. It was shift. enjoyable with Clint there. They're a rolling sandwich, which is junk. But anyway, we can't blame CBS. Like CBS did good for SRX at Five Flags, and I was glad to finally see it. I didn't get to watch anything last year because I honestly just Saturday nights were. Not a night where I was allowed to just sit down and watch a race last year. I'm allowed to now. Hell, last night she sat there and let me watch the truck race. And then I watched Rampage. And then I'm pretty sure I was on I was on the phone with you for that. And then she let me watch SmackDown. So I literally got to wake up to do this without anything to catch up on for the first time ever, actually. But I actually, I, I dig the SRX stuff. Um, much better racing than you'll see in a lot of stuff. And our boy Newman. I mean, Bubba Pollard might have beat him out for a second on that last lap, but well, Newman gets a third. One to why? I'll get to the numbers later to prove it, but Newman should still have a cup ride. Oh. You're welcome, everybody. Newman. Well, you know, that goes back to what <laughs> Newman I said. Newman deserves to be there. That it goes exactly back to what I said about the Ford can. 
massive problems on the administrative side. Whoever is making those decisions, I would like to have a mild conversation with you. Anyways, sorry. I was complaining. That's fine. But great racing there. I'm excited for tonight South Boston. I think that's going to be good. And then, yeah, moves on through everything. So, I mean, by the end of it, we get to see them in dirt cars. I just think it has to absolutely suck when it was, what, 144 in the cars with the fire suit, with all that. And these are all older fellas. You know. But, you know. Well, I know. There's Paul Tracy just sitting there cut with a hole and just covering a whole fan with his back. Just genius, you know. But that had to suck. Uh, and there's Santa Gomez. It's like, we're at the retirement home. For, like, no, these are guys that could still hunt. These are guys out here having fun in cars. Like they had about enough of NASCAR's horseshit, baloney, Bologna. But we got to think too. There's a lot of guys that are still alive that did race at the end of the time frame when guys, yeah, were not happy that tracks like Wilkesboro and other race tracks like that were closing. And oh, it's I told like, her. Like this both is, guys from that era are like this is a specific generation racing. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a specific generation with the Tonys and Helios still Helios still out there running. Didn't even know he's going to be in the race until the morning of the race, and boom, wins. Good job, Mario. Marco I mean, Marco was out there. Ryan Hunter Ray was out there. I mean, there's Paul I, Tracy I was, who's a Mario lady. for yeah. But there's guys that you know are still actually even running in like the IndyCar series and stuff that were out there. You know, just I mean, for the sake. Of, just for, still races. Just for the sake of running. I mean, that's all they, they wanted to race. Like, that's what they do. You can tell who really wants to race when they have an off weekend from traveling all over God's creation and into car series to go and drive for Tony with Tony Stewart. Like, when you get I mean, anyone that's still at that age willing to even have anything to do with racing and Tony Stewart together, when that's 140. Yeah, when it's, anyone that wants to get out there in a car that's 144 degrees and race for that long, yeah, what that's dedication. You. There's nothing else you actually know how to do in the world if you're out there literally dying. I would. Not you, Newman. That's not going. We already saw you try to die. We don't need that anymore. Don't need no to see that at all. But we know uh, you like to do things and test the car and new design new stuff, Newman. But we don't have to yeah. wreck the car with you in it to do that. Hey, everyone always says of when the Tone Five Hundred will die trying. <laughs> well. A few times. Newman said, hold my beer. Right. Yeah, and then Denny proved how garbage of a human being he is, and that's why he'll never win a championship. Because there's this thing, it's called karma. It is real. I'm going to leave it at that, because there's some meaner things I could say about certain individuals, but they got theirs and now we're going to get ours when walter goes over all the usac and stuff that we can't watch because i yeah have less money after i pay all my utilities and all that nowadays than well it costs to get dirt vision or flow racing for a month so thanks guys all right miserable pricks so you move that out of the way oh oh all right so usac from last weekend we got wrong way for silver crown could be dangerous going the wrong way what's that could be dangerous going the wrong way yeah and a usac <laughs> race with dangerous yeah it could be it could be a real bad actually oh uh, sorry sketchy to say the least so it was a good race i liked it at the end of it though cj leary locked it out again um second place was clat or sorry Whoop. Second place was Brady Bacon. I'm not sure I said class. Well, Brady Bacon. Pacer. Yeah. And then third place was Jake Swanson. Um, I liked the heat laps. I actually ended up liking the heat laps out of everything for that race, but that's another conversation on its own. That's uh, was that one of my favorite tracks? Obviously, Port Royal Speedway. Um, Understandable. I just, after the race, they put up new points. And the leading guy at that moment is Logan CV and first for points. Second is Cody Swanson. Third is CJ Leary. Fourth is Justin Grant. And fifth is Brady Bacon. 
that's the top five in points after that race. I like that guy just because of his name. Oh, um, Bacon. <laughs> and then after that, we had uh, three more USAC national races. Uh, I'm going to do the top three for the race and top three for the points for all three of them. Uh, starting with the 17th, we had the race at Williams Grove. The top three was Jake Swanson, CJ Leary, and Logan Seavey. Then top, top three in points after oh shit, what am I doing? The top three in points after that. <laughs> there we go. It was there we go. There. CJ Leary, Logan CB, and Brady Bacon. Yeah, it's Bacon. Now I got listed twice. You know, that has to suck in a, Yeah, it's Bacon. Yeah, right. Uh, the 18th, they raced at uh, Port Royal with the National Series. Good track. CJ Leary, Logan CB, and Jake Swanson was the top three of the race. For the points, it was Justin Grant. Brady Bacon, Robert Bilal, Bello, sorry. Bacon. Uh, and last but not least, on the 19th, they had a race at Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, at Bloomsburg Fair Raceway. Yeah, yeah at, right this actually, time. actually, finally went to the fair the first time ever after living there forever. Not a bad looking track from I me. Mean, we walked by the thing, it's not bad looking. It looks good. And yeah, I mean, so from, what I've walk, seen from walking good. by and seeing it, I mean, I've never seen anyone race on it, but the track actually, like the dirt and all that, looked, I mean, healthy and good. Um, and, so I did. The top it. three points after that race was Justin Grant. Oh, shit. Lost Justin Grant, Brady Bacon, and Logan Seavey. Bacon. Right. Um, I wanted bacon, but I had to buy a pre-slice those really tiny hams because, well, the price of that compared to a pack of bacon was, well... Right, Next one is the modifies. Do you go with modifies? Nope. I did not. But I did right. cover about 15 different vehicle types for Amsoil Off-Road and American Flat Track two races, so I got those out of the way for you. you gotcha. Know. Um, Stuff that regular people might be able to actually. So catch. the the Wheel of Modified race was really good. Oh, I love those things. Tried to print off their their time sheet time sheets and stuff, and the notes from the actual track didn't work. That was one. Short. That's one of those that it's a damn shame that they don't get more coverage than they do because yeah, those they, guys have some of the best races out there. Oh, uh, the top five was Justin Bossignor. Sorry if I sound like I'm not pronouncing anything right. My nose is still a little wanky. Uh, second was Matt Hirschman. Third was Ron Stilt. Fourth was Sam Ramu. And fifth was Doug Kobe. <clears throat> the race, though, between the top three, I felt like it was a really good race. Every once in a while, fourth and fifth place guys would get close to them, but the actual top three race, pretty good. I so so it was like uh, Todd Gilliland, Zane Smith, and Hosovar at Knoxville until Hosovar blew up. Well, like, well, there was the three of them under a blanket, and then everyone else was like seconds back. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. I, yeah, I'll oh, I was saying, like, it was like that, where they were just gone. Great racing between the three of them, but just everyone else, you well, know, they didn't catch the trick. Uh, Pinties. Pinties. The top five was Kevin LaCroix, Alex Tagliani. Tagliani? Sorry, Tagliani. See, I recognize Dexter him Stacey. from something else. Dexter Stacy, Gary Clute, and Luis Felipe Montour. That was a big one. That was a mouthful. Alex Tagliani, didn't he drive like IndyCar or something before? Uh, I think he ran IndyCar, and I think he did a couple F1 races. I say, I know the name. He did one series, and then the other one he did a couple yeah. races. So yeah. one of the two he did more than the other. Yeah, so I know I know the name from something like that. 
Yeah, I feel better. Uh, At least my brain's working. On that one. Diddle, 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 diddle. It's already been a long one. All right, two more left. We got the NHRA Thunder Nationals. Sorry, Thunder Valley Nationals at Bristol Dragway last uh, weekend. I'm going to read the winners from each class for sake of conversation and time. Top fuel was Justin Ashley. Funny car was Ron Caps. There you Pro go. Stop. Huh? Still going, Ron Caps. He's never going to retire. No. Never. Pro stock was Aaron Stanfield. Pro stock motorcycle was Jerry Savoy. Super stock was Mike Crutchfield. Stock eliminator was Darren Poole Adams. Stock, or sorry, that was stock eliminator was Darren Poole Adams. Stock super comp was Sean Langdon. Super gas, Chris Lewis. Top sportsman, Tyler Kahili. Factory stock showdown was David Barton. Street legal, Jason Nelson. And last but not least, in super stocks was Jeff Longhaney. Ron Capsa, man, he's been there for like 7,000 years. They still win right. it. I'm not, I'm not complaining. Just like John Force, the second you don't hear his name anymore, what the sport is officially dead. And I hate to say it, but before we start with anything coming up this weekend, I want to touch on something that just happened yesterday. I'm a Jess. Now we're getting it. Now we'll, we'll get into that. We're getting into that. Oh yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to cover the Fair truck race. I'll let you take the wheel. Yeah. Well, I'm saying as it already happened, I'm going to cover the truck race. Saves everyone from having to hear this angelic voice. Talk about it on Monday. I might mention that time. Jess is a idiot for trying to make it four wide, literally at the last second. So then everyone's going, uh, and then he drives away perfectly fine. And three trucks get wrecked because he's a, idiot and he got a top five and yeah but get on to all the stuff from this weekend that we're not going to see and then i got i got a bunch after that to include all the right. truck race that one i can do real quick excuse me you this ran weekend, out of those years ago super bikes is running from yesterday till tomorrow they're racing at the Ridge Motorsports Park in Shelton, Washington. Um, today, they're racing AFT, Lima Half Mile at the Allen Lima. County Fairgrounds. Yep. American Flat Track is running the Lima Half Mile at Allen County Fairgrounds yep. in Lima, Ohio. hey It's Lima to us, but if you go there, they, they pronounce it Lima. Well, it's like, it's like, it's like here, like. Just don't want to make a complaint. We're, say it. Uh, we're here in North Indiana Carolina. Is no different. And here in North Carolina is what, Beaufort, but then. You go down to South Carolina, it's Beaufort, or it's vice versa. I don't know which one. Spelled the same way. Deal with I it. gave up. Tomato, tomato, <laughs> shut I up. Do. Let's shut up or eat an elbow. Um, then I, after that, yeah, today and tomorrow, you have the Yamaha Racing Snowshoe for GNCC at Snowshoe, Wisconsin. Snowshoe. Then uh, in our NHRA, they're running from Thursday till tomorrow. At the Summit Racing Equipment Nationals at the Summit Racing Motorsports Park in Norwalk, Ohio. If you guys have FS1 or FS2, check your listings because they don't do it like I don't watch, you know, get to see them live very like often doing getting whole blocks, but they do do NHRA in 30. So if you're interested in all, just check out FS1 or FS2, NHRA in 30. They have them up all the time. And, uh, it recaps everything for you really fast just on a quick little side note there um that if is you the... have, for just for our viewers out there if you have direct tv i can make a simple suggestion that makes life Visual a lot bastards. easier for people that they've started um if you go into your search bar and you search just motorcycle racing and then hit record on motorcycle racing it will literally record every single motorcycle series that is aired through their program Oh, yeah. Well, like, and you know, then you can do the same thing for auto racing. That covers literally yeah. everything from trucks to monster trucks to cars to off-road racing to electric off-road race. It's and if you're, and if you're in a, if you have Hulu Live TV, once you're done with auto racing, go all the way to the right. Like keep going. And they have also have a separate motorsports section, so you can click on there. And I mean, you can go and pick and choose whichever ones you want. Just if you have Hulu Live TV, good luck because half the time it records and 
the other half i literally go on there and like it's set to record just, i, I then make sure i go and hit record i make yeah but yes go through auto, uh, on hulu they have auto racing at the beginning under sports and then motorsports is way the hell that way but they have them under two separate things and there actually is two di- giant different oh yeah different listings of all the ones there so you can pick whichever ones you want to do um, and that's how i catch a lot of the stuff where i go in the hill so okay. after that one so then uh today you have oh sorry i'm gonna back it up i'm going out of order on that yesterday we had the silver crown race at madison international speedway in oregon wisconsin in oregon wisconsin oh, uh, and then uh, the top Wait. five of that race was C.J. Leary. Second was Bobby Santos. Third was Cody Swanson. Fourth was Justin Grant. Fifth, Gary Bush. Bush. Shot. Shot. Uh, just, just let it go. Too messed up. I can't pronounce things right now. My nose is messing me up. Hey, I'm missing half a two. You know, hard huh? is this, you know, hard is this to say three when you're missing? Right. And, there right. isn't a, and there isn't a tooth to catch it? Like, so I sound like, I sound like I got a lift. Oh, after, wait. Your last, after last night's race, your boy, uh, your, your boy got uh, knocked out of the top five in points. Man. Silver Crown. Uh, the top five was CJ Leary for first in points. Second was Logan Seavey. Loser. Third was Cody Swanson. Fourth was Justin Grant. And fifth was Ryan Tyler. No one likes a loser. Except for me and Walter, we love, you know, Matty D. It's not that he's a loser. He just has some of the worst luck. Well, if you really wanted to use us as an example, I mean, you could, you could be honest. I'm a dad, Raiders fan. And even I'm a Raiders, though I'm stupid. I'm a Raiders I've always, and a Steelers fan. I've always kind of pushed for the for the Lions, even though it will never be, to me, what the Broncos are. But, hey. My, my dad was a Wally Dollenbach fan. <laughs> We're going to talk about losers. I mean – Let's be honest with Wally. Anywho. Uh, <laughs> Love Wally Dollenbeck. Great road racer. Yes, he was. Terrible yes. luck. At terrible, terrible NASCAR. It's kind of like Robbie Gordon. Mm, round is just not your friend. All sorts of weird shapes and different angles. That That's up your alley. Add speed to those, then, then Robbie Gordon's good. Uh, moving on, though. There's a Silver Crown race on the 30th. That's going to be at the Loyal. Oh, wow. Loyal. Woo. Lucas Oil Indianapolis Raceway Park in Brownsburg, yeah. Indiana. Yeah, you were off Loyal. Lucas Oil Loyal, I get it. Uh, <laughs> it's, early, it's early. It's then, Saturday. Then uh, tonight we have, for the National Series USAC, we have the Wilmot Raceway. Um, it's Wilmot, Wisconsin. They don't have the actual race names for these races, so sorry if it sounds weird compared to what I normally would say. Well, all, all the USAC races this we can have weird names. It's just, anyways, I'll move on. Sorry. But the, the next Amsoil off-road race, stuff. The Amsoil off-road stuff yeah. doesn't make a damn lick of sense. Exactly. Uh, it- next, the next race is tomorrow night at Angel Park Speedway in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Hell yeah, it's a Midwestern thing. Yeah, it's Midwestern of Michigan. You guys just can't name anything without people having to look at it and go. Dude, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. We have some of the most jacked up, weird, or off the wall names for racetracks, let alone the actual race names yeah. sometimes. I'll look at some of the some of the let schedules I still follow for more local tracks, and I'm like, what does that name have anything to do with race? Like, who in their right mind would say, I'm going, we need to call it Monkey's Uncle? bra store race that has hey. nothing to do with race hey <laughs> hey you get your money where you can well yes i understand sponsorship i get that but some hey. of these names hey, I'm just, just a hair different reworded or... i mean we had last weekend for the off-road stuff we had the lions roaring antigo speedway with yeah, lion, lions roaring and granted, it's the Lions Club that sponsors it, so I get the Lions part, but Lions Roaring and Tigo Speedway. There you go. That's what I'm saying. Stuff like that. Um, uh, yesterday, did you talk about the SRX? I think you did talk about that. Yeah, I SRX. talked about SRX. Yeah, I thought yeah. so. Helio, Pretty the man, the myth, the legend. Confident. Didn't even know he was running on Friday. Wins it on Saturday. 
Oh, really? Elio, yeah, he wasn't even in the race till Saturday morning. They gave him one of the back. No, I thought you knew, though. Oh, I found out Saturday. Yeah, like I found out when everyone else did that he was even in the race. I mean, he didn't know until what, Friday night, Saturday? Like, hey, come on down. Happy Gilmore, come on down. To no shit. No, like he last, hey, what? You're in it. Okay. Between eight and nine, it was on. I heard on it. I heard it on. Uh, Do you want to come race? Yeah, one sure. of the dirt vision races. It was on at the same time. I heard it at the same time. Do watching. you want to race? Yeah, screw it. I'm coming. Okay. Okay. Really? And then you win. But race car diary doesn't want to race. Oh, anyway, sorry. Uh, 144 degree car up. Tonight, we also have the, the Pinty's race, the Pro Line 225, the Eastbound international speedway sorry i tried to figure out why they didn't have the state on there i'm not sure where that one was if i remember correctly though i believe it was towards virginia or maryland maybe if i remember correctly anyways i'll correct myself by next week and guarantee moving on the wheel and modifieds are also racing today at riverhead raceway same one that we've always watched for the late model and other stuff with yeah Kyle Larson likes that track. Let's just put it that way. Kyle Larson likes um, tracks. <laughs> and then obviously yes, I'm sure you covered the Arca stuff for coming up today. Oh yeah. The Minerals Probably. 250 at Elko Speedway. Elko well, New Market, Minnesota, which is just the beautiful beautiful name. Matt TV flow <laughs> racing and then radio <laughs> coverage on Arca Racing dot com so uh, and the amsoil off-road is running forest country potawatomi brush run at crandon international raceway in crandon wisconsin thanks for that one guys forest country potawatomi brush run thank you for messing with ski's head hey I, I still got it out but you're just looking what the hell Oh, Menards 250, Rackley Roofing 200, Ally 400, Forest Country, Potawatomi Brush Run. Like, come on, man. I hurt my damn head. Too many syllables for this early in the morning. Never yesterday, I was ready yesterday because, you know, again, you were dying. So it was the last show that I did. And by then, my brain was, I was up, I was ready. I was tired of idiots. So I was wide awake then, but lots of stuff going on across the thing. Again, I think that flat track and all of them deserve better than they get. Um, Most definitely. I'd say ARCA deserves better than they get, but yeah, they get the races cut short anyway because whoever schedules them is re- like, you're not it's even I'm glad it's like, not you're not even airing it until next week. You could start it whenever the you need to. We don't have to wait until something stupid happens. You have to cut it short so the other guys can race. Like, that is actually stupid. That is actually, like, textbook definition of... Insanity. Like, you've done it twice this year already. Like, that is the definition. You're definitely getting it. Dumb. Like, you're actually... In, like, yes. Anyway, before I get myself in trouble for saying anything, Truck Series ran the Rackley Roofing 200 at Nashville last night. And you know, it had some good racing in there. I mean, Ryan Priest was good, to, again, to see him up there doing good, got the pole. Yeah. That's two races in a row at that track. Yeah. Started fourth last year, started got the pole this year. Matty D started eighth and was running better than that until his pits team just, yeah. Haley started 14th. The, the, the shenanigans hey, in that, we'll that rack there. really frustrated me. Yeah, we'll get there. Crafton took out Jack Woods on, like, lap 20, which was just, I mean, he could have lifted. It was lap 20. Like, you didn't have, like, lap 20. Yeah. Every time I've seen him pissed off this year because he gets taken out within the first, like, 15, 20 laps. It's amazing how many times he does it to other people. And I like Crafton way more than Denny, but, like, come on, man. Like, I've seen you just run people over just because you could. Right. Didn't see you lifting. But then you get mad. And someone does, like, anyway, Zane Smith dominated literally – until Priest got the lead from him. He let every green flag lap until Priest got from got the lead from him towards the end of stage two. He got a sixth stage win of the season, which he's racking them up. You know, those 
playoff points there adding up and that's going to help him i think get to the end because he's just got he's going to have too big of a buffer compared to a lot of people um definitely especially with the way it's going right now now we can get into that i have no idea why ty majeski thought literally in the last second they were on the straightaway to pull out from underneath maddie d and make it four wide right at the entry of the turn and then at Grand End Fingers night was done. Well, the mess, Matty the mess D's night was done. That. Corey Himes night was done. And Ty Majeski didn't get a single bit of damage because they were all going so, off. Why would you even try to go four wide there? Like what in your brain said that was a good idea? Because no way in hell they knew that you were under there. All right. I could still complain about what we're about to say right here. But well, the truth of the matter is, even though the initial contact was not between Majeski, and Matthew even in Deno, that wreck hands down and wholeheartedly is on Ty Majeski. Because had he not come down here and pulled the air off three cars in a corner, that wouldn't have pushed Matty D up. And then it wouldn't have pushed Matty D and Corey Heim together, and they wouldn't have hit. Who was that? Finger. Finger? Yeah. In finger got crushed. So the three of them got wrecked. Majeski didn't get nothing, all because he decided he was going to pull under three people in a corner. Those guys were already trying to separate the corner. You can see in finger. Trying <laughs> they're trying to, to they're trying to go their way to get space, so they all make it yeah, through. And, and then all of a sudden, here comes Ding Dong and that dives. Down. That was that was a bad bench. Now I understand diving down below something because I've said it even on this show. I'm all for it, but there's a when time where there's already three guys, and you see them trying to separate. Why would you dive under them three before they get separated? Why'd you dive under them at all? Well, before they get separated, it's stupid. Like, wait till they separate hey. out a little bit. Like, let one guy back out like he's hey. trying. All, all he had to do was wait another set he of turns. He could have waited until they yeah. out, out of turn. He, what was that? They came into They were into three. three. He could have waited yeah. until, you know, by, turn, by the next time they got around there, they would have separated it all out and figured it all out. Oh, easily. They probably would have had it sorted out by the middle of the yeah. next stretch. Yeah. Say, but Literally. they would have had it figured out within the next lap. They would not be three wide anymore. And then you can do something crazy and go three wide and do it. Not. And the whole purpose, like great infinger, and I know what he was trying. He was just trying to back out, but not do it fast because he wanted to keep his yeah. truck out of the wall. That's a realistic thought process in racing. There was no reason that guy had to suck some air out, but Majeski decided he's going to drive right up in there. So yeah, that was like again, if he was there, remember, was... people don't forget that. If he was down the straightaway, you know, if he did it halfway down the straightaway, I get it. That was literally like the last hundred feet going into the turn. So guess what? Those guys underneath, but I'm sure Grand Enfinger not, didn't even actually realize he was down there at all, which made oh, it I'm sure I'm worse. Saying, you got to be kidding me. I was like, I'm 12 years old and I have a bigger brain than you do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it was Corey a, Hine drives obviously better than me drives way older than he actually is but with that being said there's certain people out there racing it's like you should know better than to come under that many people in a corner like, i should not have to say that especially to a guy a place that where long. arrow is a big part of it clean, well, not a rookie. yeah so, i'm not saying clean air dirty air what that's a that's a big game that's a big player in the race like air is your biggest competition in the race Everyone's in dirty air, three wide, and you decide to dive bomb everyone at the last second going into a turn. What did you think was, was going to happen? I mean, it's kind of like and, Chase Briscoe at, yeah, you know, to Reddick at Bristol on the dirt. At least he admitted, you know what? <laughs> but I was going regardless what, it either wasn't going to end well or it wasn't going to end well. Yeah. <laughs> There mean yeah. nothing from Ty. I mean, granted, he could have said something post race because NASCAR doesn't give you any post race coverage. Because yeah, you know. I didn't see anything. And they, did, and they didn't actually. interview Matty D. Which, yeah, six four six fourteen this morning was I checked NASCAR and there was not. I didn't see anything on. And they didn't interview. Jesse. And they didn't interview Matty D. Oh no, they weren't going to. Well, you know, there's not a remember though. No, no remember, remember though. And Finger and Heim had to ride back to the infield care center because they had to get put on the hook. Matty D drove his, you know, that shit box back to the garage, which means he was not required to go to the infield care center because he drove it back. So, you know, this, well, let's leave it alone. Right. 
He doesn't look like happy Maddie D. He just he looks like Maddie Ski. I mean, he's gonna punch someone in the neck. I mean, that was dumb. That's all it was. That was dumb. All I can say, honestly, though, is Ty Majeski needs to understand that you. It's not one person we're talking about. There's three people you absolutely screwed out of that race last night for any good point position. Yeah. And with that, I'm not even talking about race, but just point position. Yeah. You screwed those guys with them points. Don't but, think they're not going to remember. Matty D isn't going to make the playoffs now. Even if they would say, hey, what is 12th? He's, that differential is too large because he's just had too much stupid. Like how many yep. weeks has that happened? It's like Grant Enfinger, he's finally coming just around the sign speed. In a row. Yeah, like he's just he, flat out been wrecked. And he was run, and if, yeah, if his pits team didn't, you know, those gobble lugs tight, he would have still been up in the top six because that's where he was all night until you know, stupid happened. Like either something breaks, he has a pit problem, someone wrecks him, and the guy just can't catch a break. But he was running better until stupid happened, and you know, with Jeske, they do remember. Well, it's like when. It, Especially when you finish fourth. They were... Hey, they finally he, he did better for Wood Brothers than really anyone has done in a long time. Blaney. Remember Blaney go to win? Yeah. One. Yeah. Uh, Trevor Bain got. Uh, he, did his first, he did it in his first one out. The, uh, I could be wrong, but I don't feel like Paul Menard won. No, Paul Menard doesn't win anything. That's what I'm saying. So. Palmer Granted, Matty D didn't win, but your car went from garbage to at least top 10, 15 almost every single race. Paul Menard doesn't know how to win. It's against his religion. So he's lost his religion. What he's, point? I mean, like it, it's actually it's I just think Paul Menard's I think Paul Menard's a dick as a human being, but yeah, that's pompous mother. You know, I've seen some of his interviews with people on TV are going, like, really? But and that's that's what you gave him. Like what you actually are, Paul, an asshole. I've seen people wrecked, like wrecked, wrecked from the lead intentionally. That gave a better interview than you did after you qualified fifteenth, and they want to know, you know. Yeah, how's the car feeling for the race? Like if your last name wasn't Menard, you still you wouldn't have been driving like for like you never would have got your ride. How about you show a little? You wouldn't even made it to Arca. How about you show a little? Humility or humanity or guys res- like Paul respect. Menard outside of outside of the scenario he was in, guys like Paul Menard usually don't make it to a sanctioned series. Sorry, no offense to him. If I could if I could get over just stupid people, probably could have made it to a sanctioned series outside of Michigan or a Midwest tour. I could have actually made it to a bigger ranking series. Like but I did. have a problem with idiots. Like I have no problem throwing a helmet at somebody or walking up and hitting them. Look at what happened to Kurt Busch and Kevin Harvick. They had to change as well. You're done, buddy. No, but anyway, back on target. Again, it yep. was it was stupid. It was very stupid. And well, someone's gonna get him. Someone and I'm sure him. somebody's gonna complain, but you know what? Good job, host of art. I don't care. He did good last night. Uh-huh. Minus the whole tangle between him and John Hunter. Hey, that was John. But hey, for John, the most part, hey, John Hunter blocked it. John Hunter wrecked himself trying to block Kosovar's. I mean, he literally just. Well, I'm just saying, I know there's going to be people. Well, out there, of course, there are. John everyone, everyone has to freak out. John Hunter didn't turn hard left to try to block him and run directly into his quarter panel. Well, yeah. well, he wouldn't have went sideways through the grass. Just don't be mad because John Hunter wrecked. Himself, it's kind of hey, like you know, honestly, he was, did walk away better than he probably should have. It was most guys yeah. usually go down into dirt. It was like when old dude Don't went to come back out with a complete bumper. It, it was like when Kyle was trying to get the lead, you know, what, Vegas or something, and old dude wrecked himself trying to block Kyle, and everyone freaks out. Look what Kyle did! Like Kyle was on a run. What that guy turned left, and there was a truck there, and he ran that left as hard as he could until well, there was. Pretty much no more track, and then it was 99. Like, yep. Turns out violent blocks lead to bad things. You can't blame the person. You can't blame the person getting blocked because the other person turned hard left and took themselves out. Yeah, definitely. 
called. Just saying. That's not how it goes. Haley got screwed again. What else is new? That's kind of her thing. She likes to get screwed. Right. Someone, every weekend seems to be just something. At least she didn't go down to Ball of Flames. But regardless of all that, Ryan Priest got, you know, played the air game because they sure got close to him at the end. They were there. And picked up his second straight win at Nashville, the second straight win for David Gill in racing, and the 11th different winner in the Truck Series this year, and also the fifth straight non-regular winner in a truck race. That's a mouthful worth of stuff. Zane Smith was second. Hosvar pulled out a third. Ty Majeski got a fourth because, you know, why not? Stuart Friesen, another top five. Christian Eck is sixth. Tyler Ankrum, seventh. Max Gutierrez got an eighth and only a second career start, so... Shout out to him. That's yeah, impressive. John Hunter ninth, which is uh, for how bad he ran. That wasn't bad. Crafton got a 10th. Uh, Chandler Smith got a 15th and he had a terrible night. Todd Bodine 27th after running much better than that all night. Haley 28th. Matty D got 31st after, you know, being taken out by yeah. idiots. Um, and again, Priest, what do you say? What tires were gone. I just made sure I arrow blocked the bejesus out of him. Hey, that's the convenience of being the leader. Well, if you know how big- like it was last week, I said about the Toyota trucks having problems. That, was it Toyota trucks I was talking about, or was it the cars we were talking about? I feel like it was the trucks. Well, anyways, I noticed this week again, I, I felt like I said something about the driveline problems, transmission, rear ends, differentials, axles. Anyways, uh, this week they had a throttle issue. Uh, I think it was just two races ago they had other issues up there on the throttle intake side, I felt like. I just wanted to point it out again because, well, it's becoming a a noticed one for me. I guess the way to say. It. Anywho, gets us over to the Xfinity Series. Is where Ray and Nashville might as well stay there. Tennessee Lottery 250 practice. AJ Allmendinger was you know, AJ was the fastest until like the last like ten seconds when Sheldon Creed beat him out to get that. Uh, Kyle Weatherman was sixth in practice. Good for him. Yeah, that's a name you don't get to see up there very often on the oval tracks like that. So shout out to them. Ty Gibbs seventh, Trevor Bain eighth, and Trevor again has a sponsor, which is a great change of pace because normally he's just in his plain black car with the red 18 on it. So glad to see they got that. Priest 10th, Reddick 12th, but I'm pretty sure he blew the transmission up because he went from fourth to second. And, oh. Or his motor. I don't remember which it was, but he, he definitely missed a shift and blew something up. So I'm sure he's in the back automatically. Um Qualifying in the race are later today in just a few short hours. I said, watch out for the you know for the Cup guys that are in there, just because. Um, and then Junior Motorsports, obviously, you know, Ty Gibbs and you know Trevor Bain, those two are going to be in the mix, and AJ Allmendinger. And congrats to them for being that good on a Noble because normally he isn't. So to be that fast, but Junior Motorsports Cup guys, I mean, I'm going to pick them until someone beats them. And hey, as of right I'm now, definitely rooting for Josh Perry. As everyone's proven this year, no one's beating them. So, except for AJ at Portland after he went through the grass like three times and was down the lap and couldn't drive three, you know, couldn't drive more than a turn without something stupid happening. They came back and won. Right. But yeah, this should be a good, good race. I just want to see what the Cup guys are going to do and if anyone could beat Junior Motorsports. The only people that look like that could be Junior Motor Sports is Junior. I mean, if you think about it, last year Kyle Bush won this race. And then Justin Algaier, Harris Burton, Josh Berry, and AJ Almond. I mean, minus Harrison Burton, I think you're going to see a lot of that this year again. Huh. And Harrison? That's the last time you'll see that kind of racing out of Harrison Burton. That's just that. Thing. Don't worry. I talked enough trash about him yesterday. And the Cup uh, Series. Oh, you're still there? Okay. Oh, you're good. Go ahead. I was going to say the Cup Series of much, you know, not a lot of notes, but Bubble was first by, I mean, a second and a half, a tenth and a half, which is, yeah, impressive. And Kurt was up there in six. So good for both of them. I said I thought Bubble was going to do a lot better than he did last weekend. I just, you know, just one of those tracks. And he has been running better a lot of the time, except for when stupid happened. But I said it yesterday, he was looking like he was going to do better. And he was the fastest by a tenth and a half, which is kind of actually an impressive amount of time in a race car to beat everyone by. But he was there. Uh, Ty Dillon, 28th, shocker. And even more shocking, his teammate, Eric Jones, was 13th in practice. <laughs> shocker. 
Um, Harrison Burton, 30th. Brad, 33rd. Kevin was back in 29th. I heard the converse, some of the conversations that him and Rodney, at least the subject matter, what him and her bits and pieces of, uh, but well, he can't turn at all. I, I can't turn in one and two. Can't turn in three and four. Like, so what you're saying is. Or not turning at all. <laughs> you might have a problem turning. There was some mediation, some. I said a few minutes in that conversation. There was some mediation. Yeah. Thanks to Mr. But, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Newman was 14th last year in Brad's car. Granted, new car, but I mean, Busher's way better up. So, yeah, 33rd for Brad. Thank you for proving my point. I didn't even right. Harrison Burton was, again, 30th. Matty D, though, last year finished 24th, two laps down. So, you don't have to shoot that high, Harrison. Yeah, but you can. Do I it. feel like you, you can, had an issue last year. Well, if I remember correctly, but you can do it, Harrison. But he's got to be beat twenty fourth or two laps down. If you're two laps down, well, better be twenty fourth. But I picked. Yeah, I figured. Uh, and again, they proved it like practice times yesterday. But Trackhouse will be good. Hendrick will be good. Uh, I said Bubba would be better, but bow ties all over the place, really. Uh, and I think they'll get better again. I, no offense to – I think Bubba will do better. I don't think he's going to be a tenth and a half faster. Oh, no, I, I think I think as long as Kevin gets his car under control, him and Eric Amarola will probably be decent at this track, too. Yeah. So they did do good last year. Oh, well, they did. They so ran half way – Decent this year. I got it right here. Let's. I got it. I, I, I can save you a trip. See, Larson, Chastain, Byron, Elmer, Olin, Harvick, Stenhouse. Congratulations on your contract extension. Yeah, that's a good deal for you. Suarez seventh, Kurt eighth, Bell ninth, Legato tenth, Kyle eleventh. Again, Newman fourteenth, Jones twentieth, Bubba twenty first. And I said I thought both of them would do better than that, which they should. Matty D. Yeah. Well, sorry, I was twenty. Well, I also want to twenty fifth. Matty D was twenty fifth, two laps down. So it's even this point last yeah. year. Matty D was nineteenth in points. Okay, I don't even want to hear um, the number for numb nuts. I just want I want to point that out. Nineteenth in points this time last year, right? Um, that's what I wanted. Thank you. You're welcome. If you were to look at the points right now. Yeah, Harrison Burton ain't in the top 20. Lucky if he's, so, in, the, lucky if he's in the top 30. Rest of my case well, there. Lucky if he's in the top 30. Okay, Jesus. It's been hard to watch at times. Yeah. Don't I worry, though. Got a joke. Don't worry, guys. The commentators for Fox were right there to make excuses for him. Well, it's because he was in the back because he had to, you know, trouble on his pit stop. Like he was running 26 before he had trouble on his pit stop. It's not like he was running up front and he got put back to 30th, but he was already there. Right. But yeah, well, it's all because of his pit stop. It has nothing to do with the fact that he should not be in that car. That is not anything. I agree. Him. I he it's was not ready and he should have not been put in that car. Why do we keep setting people up for failure? Every year, well, also, send them back down. The driver's also roulette. Also, understand though, if you think about it, John Hunter, took, Alfredo, Harrison. Now, like you took a group of people that legit were working well together, performing well together, and instead of perfecting that performance, we just gone. That, my friend, is not Maddie D's fault. That and I think that they should come out and say, "Sorry, we screwed up." They never will. Oh, no. We know that. Know it. Knows that. Um, but, again, I think the bow ties are going to be good tomorrow. I don't know. I just Hendrick showed too much power in track house. I'm sorry. Chastain will be there. Chastain finished second last year in the equipment he had. I can just imagine what he's done this year, except last year he didn't piss off half the garage. So True. Um, know, just even though – even though Denny, even though Denny, well, sorry, Denny, you have every single one of those coming to you as you drive 
like an asshole. Like it is. Um, just to confirm your statement, currently Harrison Burton is sitting in 28th in points. Shit. There's starting parks that are you, you know could run better than that. I'm sorry. I'd be in obtuse. Sorry. There were starting park people that started in park that are running roughly, you know, used to do that all the time. In fact, there's only 36 guys in the field this weekend at least. So 42, 43. 43. Like there's like so 28, 36 this weekend. Do you know how many bad teams there are that you have to be? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and we'll move on to the race I'm really excited about at South Boston Speedway for the SRX racing because I never like, somehow type it up on the thing ever because it's like on my priority to make sure I watch it and then I screw it up and don't ever type it ever. Even when I have my notebook in front of my face and I wrote stuff down, I still screw it up. But <laughs> again, Paul Tracy's in there, Ryan Hunter Ray's in there again, Bobby Labani again, Ryan Newman one more time. Marco Andretti, Michael Waltrip, Greg Biffle, Tony Stewart, Tony Kanon, the local le- guy, legend guy is Sellers. We'll have Ernie France Jr. and Helio Castro Neves, who took over you know, Bill Elliott's spot that Bill drove last weekend. Technically, if you just look at it, but Castro Neves is scheduled to be in this one, 8 p.m. CBS South Boston Speedway, which, by the way, is in Virginia, not in like Boston, Boston. And this is where I can't believe they couldn't get a Burton to be in the race, as I'm pretty sure. Well, never mind. Jeff's, Jeff's preoccupied and under contract, isn't he? You know, yeah, me. He's, well, you can get Ward. Ward Burton. What the hell is he doing? Yeah, could be I mean, that. Duck hunting. Uh, I know I he's think, doing important things. You know, he's got his own life, but get Ward in well, the I car. Know just recently, I've seen him in. <laughs> get Ward in the car and piss him off so everyone can watch you on TV can go. I feel like it was a late model. Him and Rusty Wallace were racing yesterday. It might have been. Eh, don't remind me about good old Krusty. That was my dude. He screwed me. But put Ward Burton in one of those cars, let someone cut off Ward Burton or wreck him, and then let Ward Burton do an interview. <laughs> you're, you're the, so all the new viewers that have never seen him before will go. When he talks, it's already sometimes hard to understand him. I don't understand how him and Jeff are brothers. I like you hear from the same spot, same parents. What one of you talks like that? But like, okie dokie then. But God, Ward on a racetrack, great thing. Ward pissed off after getting something stupid happening on a racetrack. Even better. Yeah, he's good for sound bites of just rage and well, incoherent, well, indecipherable words. Frustration. But, it should be a great race. Like, I'm looking forward to that one. No offense to the Xfinity series. Uh, I want Shelton Creed to have a better run. Like, I really want him to do better just because he deserves better. He's another one of those that's had a lot of stupid this year um, when he was running good. So, hopefully, he gets, you know, a better run out of that. But I think for the Cup series, just look out for Hendrick Cruz. I mean, track house. If Hendrick and track house. Hey, Chastain. I don't know. Is Ch- if, if long as Stewart for, for the will be up there. Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott for them two in particular. If if Stuart Haas doesn't perform, to be honest, I don't think the competition is going to be there like they have been recently this year. That's just me. I think Chastain will st- still track out. So well, I'm not denying it. He, he's. I don't by far think they're going to finish outside the top ten unless Football, something yeah. dumb dumb happens. It's just a finished second in garbage last year. I'm going to put safe money that he will be there pissing someone off for the lead. Saying, I mean, I'm not counting him out. I'm just saying, like, true competition guarantee. I'm putting him in my list. He just has to get pro- he has to prove us otherwise. Even when he's driving like an idiot and over his head, still finishes good. He might overly horrifically apologize at times. You know, we're all sitting there going, okay, guys. I mean, before I make a mistake. This I, okay, I guy. What? I was just trying to get over here. I also keep an eye on Kurt Busch. Hey, he's always on my list. Again, <laughs> I, I wrote down yesterday. It was in my, it's on my notes. No one can yeah. say that I didn't say it. I typed it up yesterday. 
Bubba's going to do better. Him and Eric Jones are both going to do better than they did last year, just with how they're running and less stupid. Oh yeah. definitely. Do I think Bubba's still going to be up by one and a half tenths? Hell no. Who the hell runs that fast? Like, in a very long time, minus like a race or two with Larson, where people just drove away by a tenth and a half a lap. You know, that's just not going to happen. And again, you never know. Like, there are probably people doing qualifying runs. There's probably people doing just out there doing race runs to see how, what, you know, tire wear is on a lot. Like, there are people that had a lot of different agendas out there. And that could have been a qualifying lap, which is where the tent and everyone else is running. Yeah race laps and not going you know for broke which you know again you don't know what they were but still he was up there and i think him and kurt are both going to do i think kurt has helped the team with cars wise because there's only been two or three races where bubba sucked there's been a lot of bad luck for bubba there's been a lot of crying bubba oh i did the piss off the racing gods i can think of about well i called this in 90 i can think of i can think of a lot of things bubba did to piss off the racing gods i'm just throwing it out there personally well, yeah, I mean, at the end of last season, I called this him going, or sorry, the end of last off season, I said that Kurt going there would be probably the best thing that could happen for Denny Hamlin and Bubba Wallace at that team, because oh. Kurt. Michael likes to win, and Michael Jordan and Kurt Busch kind of have the same mindset. So they like to win, and they like money, and they like racing. Like they just they like doing what they do, and they like to make money doing. Only one of them has a gambling problem, though. So I'll make sure we remember that. One of them has an addiction to racing. Like, one of them has oh, an addiction shit. to racing. One of them has an addiction to gambling. Yeah. One of them is more costly than others. Yes. Kurt, I've seen his garages. No. Yes, I said that. Garages. He's earned them. He but has, he's definitely earned them. Off, his, his off NASCAR stuff. Get him in a sport car, man. That's some good racing, too. He's... He's a wheel man. Let's see him do some drift, some drift racing. That's all. That's all he'll ever do. He'll never stop. He'll be one of those like that's. He'll be like Dale Senior. He'll, he'll literally die behind the wheel. And when he's not doing it, they'll be like you know Tony last weekend, thanking Ken Schrader and what's his name for setting up all the cars, and you know, for doing all that. Like yeah, you know, the Kenny's still out there, but he's not racing an SRX. But he's setting everyone up. Ready? Here you go. Well, and when he's not doing that, he's still running open wheel. Yeah, yeah I like so. So I mean. Ken, Ken, you know, Kenny, you know, Herman, Kenny well, Wallace. I'll, he's I'll, out I'll there still running dirt tracks all the time. Kenny John's Wallace. done. He sold all his equipment off. JD Motorsports is done. It's gone. And I was talking, who was I talking with a couple weeks ago? Mm-hmm. Ricky Rector. Rick, he owns one of the towing company. Anyways. Yeah, John's done it. It's all sold off. Rick sold all his stuff off. I'm like, man, I started a very bad trend going into the Marine Corps selling stuff off. That was a very, very bad choice. Everybody else sold their stuff off. But anyways, street stock guys are still there. But moving on from that, Kenny Schrader will never stop racing. It's like Kenny Wallace. There's no way. It just... Even good. if they get to the point where they can't set race cars up, they'll start buying race checks and running race checks. Watch, I guarantee it. When they get to the point where they physically can't be involved with the actual racing, then they're going to start buying tracks. You just wait for it. Wouldn't be surprised. It'd be good for the sport, and it'd probably oh. help bring in it'd help bring in you know bigger sponsors and contracts. Sponsorship money could come in contracts <laughs> just because of who they are, you know, TV wise and everything. I mean, look what Tony managed to put together. SRX in its first year has better TV programming than most Especially races in the country. Greater because he's got not only NASCAR, he's got the other side of that world mm-hmm. that comes he's to got, play where yeah. his sponsorship exposure is. Tony, you know, Tony, yeah, Ray Evernam, like, and the other two. Yeah. Got a better TV contract. Kenny's could get better TV con like Kenny Schrader and Kenny Wallace, they could definitely, I feel like they deserve more airtime than they get. Not I even feel, necessarily the NASCAR air, just in general, they deserve I, more I feel, airtime. I feel they deserve to have their own podcast. Kenny and Kenny. I mean, realistically, they should, they should sure as... The Kenny and Kenny variety hour. They should like talk this. to their own people because I feel like if they were to talk to the right people, they could easily get a podcast and a show weekly with certain people. And then they'd beat us. 
then oh. I'd have to, then I'd have to not like them anymore. Dude, Kenny Schrader's probably forgot more than most people alive could know. That guy has been around forever, and he. He still knows. races. He probably knows every company at Bass we could sponsor anything racing. He knows related. a thing or two. <laughs> so you've seen a thing or two. And he has exactly. done a thing or 2,000. But that seems like a good ending point. Ended on a happy note with Kenny Schrader. And Kenny Wallace, Herman, we still love you. I I feel that NASCAR coverage sucks. And uh, Without your energy there. I always forget his first. David Reagan's dad. He's another one. What is his first? I can never remember his first Ken? name. I think Ken? it is it, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Ken Ray. You might be right. But he, he's another one of them. He, he got to the point where he, he physically couldn't race no more. Well, no. Now he only he's bought an old track. He's involved with other. I mean, it's like they just can't leave. It's like it's like dream, feel the dream. If you build it, it will come. Well, there's a racetrack. Those guys will be around. <laughs> Amen to that. But Again, it's Saturday. It's different. He wanted to talk. And we got to cover, okay, get his opinion, cover the truck race, get his you know, insights on stuff, bitch about TV contracts, which we always do, and you know, Harrison Burton, because I'm sorry. He wasn't if ready. You never, uh, side note, speaking of TV stuff, Fox, if you want to ever have Kevin come back continue doing that, you should probably straighten your shit out. Just put it out there. For TV purposes, viewing purposes, Kevin was right last week. Fix it. I don't even remember him being on the coverage, for being honest. You what? I don't even remember him being there, for honest. Oh, it was the truck race. Hmm. But they were going, so they were. But I remember Jamie, Mike, and Phil last weekend. But they were at the, they were at the other place. The, the, the actual only one was booth the before. at the race was Kevin, Ryan, and Brad. Well, I'm gonna teach Brad that went last down, had a smile. And, and when it started, and all of a sudden they weren't changing anything, that's when Kevin stopped talking with them two. And those two continued going on to hear on TV, I but that's when eyes. Kevin did this. And that's when you can hear in the background him letting in the people. So it's one of those things where it's like Fox just I swear get your stuff together. I swear Chuck's out of his mind because I don't remember any of them being there. Not this weekend. Last weekend. Yeah, last weekend, Knoxville. I swear to God. Is that not the race that Kevin lost his mind at? No, I don't think so. Am I it's, forgetting a week? I think you're out of your mind. There was the all, driver's only broadcast like a week or two before that at Charlotte. It was at Charlotte. Last weekend, Jamie got the thing. I'm telling you, I'm crazy, but. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Sorry. You're right. You're right. It was two weeks ago. For some reason, I thought it was last week. I got to mix uh, up. I was just Sorry. sitting here letting you go. Like, but anyways, I could have been crazy. It was involved with that. I just I'm I'm uh, over the broadcast and stuff, and it is a it's a problem. But I'm saying, like, those guys, if they ever want those people to continue doing that, you, you gotta listen. <laughs> you gotta listen. Stop being piles of garbage. Um, but it was fun. I'll be back Monday to cover all that stuff, except for the truck race. I'm not doing it twice. I'm just going to mention that Ty Majeski's a fucking idiot. Because um, he is. That was stupid. He should admit that was stupid. He better admit that was stupid. And, was I, stupid. and I will say it again. He's not new to the sport. Yeah, it's not like it was his second race ever, like Max Gutierrez. That I think he's the one that got into Haley and ran her over. Or at least that's with the radio yeah, traffic. But he just ran me over. Yep. No, I'm pretty sure you're right. <laughs> Did he just dump me? Yep. And then there he is going. Slow down. Look, right. What? There's always two sides there, but you did nothing wrong. Just keep driving. There's a crew chief. What? You did everything right. Shut the hell up, drive. But yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone, watching, listening. We're on good pods. We're now in the top news charts. We're not, we're, we've crossed over sports. Now we're in the top news chart. So that's different. Didn't see that one coming. So I appreciate that. But again, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Amazon Music, CastBox, Good Pods, all that gets shared to the Facebook and Twitter pages. I put them on MeWe as well. The videos are on YouTube and Rumble. And if you're listening to it, you can go on there, hit the subscribe button. Actually, right now, if you're watching this, in one of those corners somewhere, there's the little recommended next video for you to watch of us and the little button to click on to subscribe in the corner. It's coming probably here in a few seconds. So click on that. 
and then it subscribes automatically and I don't have to keep saying this as I'm sure you're dead hearing it, done hearing it as much as I am saying it. So do that. Again, share everything out. It helps immensely. Give us some feedback. Let me know what you think. And I'll be back on Monday to cover the rest of the stuff from the weekend. He'll be back on Friday when there's a lot more racing to cover. So support your local racetrack and have a great week. Until Monday, peace.